Hello Internets, this is Germain from Sauropod Studio. Uh, so today we decided that we should create a video demonstrating the new gameplay mechanics we've shown in our trailer. Um, since things were going by pretty fast, we thought that um, taking time to explain what was going on uh, could be nice. So let's get started. So this is what we call the Cinematic Island. Um, it's designed to be you know, big and impressive with interesting gameplay areas and tall mountains and stuff like that, but uh, it also has a pretty large castle on it. Uh, and this castle was designed to um, be a perfect example of the kind of castle you would build in Castle Story. So for example, there's this bridge right here, uh, which initially served no other purpose than to look cool. But then we added um, a mine right here and it became a really nice uh, shortcut for uh, workers to have access to the stockpile area. Um, and then there's the tower uh, in the middle. Uh, it's It happens to be the tallest spot in the entire castle, so it's really nice to um, to put archers on it because you have a longer range and you can see much further. And then there's this um, this platform right here on which we built a catapult. Uh, notice that it's filled with earth. Uh, right now the player doesn't really have the ability to uh, fill areas with earth, but uh, we think it's a really nice idea because it gives uh, players more control over their the way they build their castle. And then we have a gate right here, uh, which would have been much easier to defend if it had uh, doors. But uh, in the meantime, it's really wide, so a lot of people can go in and out easily. But unfortunately, the uh, monsters can do the same. So finally, we have uh, this uh, lookout tower uh, on the outside, which serves no other purpose than to be blown up. Uh, we decided that um, we needed to blow up something by throwing an explosive barrel. Uh, but since the, the monsters don't have catapults and we didn't want Brickrons to fight each other, uh, we thought the only solution was that uh, the Brickrons would throw an explosive barrel on a part of their own castle. So we designed a tower that could be easily captured. Uh, so it's got you know flimsy doors on the bottom and a bridge so that uh, the monsters can go in uh, easily. And it's a uh, and it's uh, in a perfect trajectory to be blown up by the the catapult. Oh, I almost forgot to talk about the torches. Uh, you might have no noticed that there's um, little yellow things uh, on the walls. Um, and if you looked at our trailer, you might have noticed that these are torches. Uh, right now, they don't do anything because it's not uh, dark. But uh, if I open the debug menu um, and change the time of the day, um, they will eventually light up and... Uh, as you can see, it totally changes the uh, ambience of the game, and it looks uh, kind of looks nice. And um, you might also have noticed that uh, they're not really on fire; they're they're made of crystals. And uh, there's a lot of crystals lying around in the game, and uh, these specific crystals, the orange one, um, they emit light when it's dark. So it's really nice to make torches out of it. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for the, the castle. Uh, I'll pass my mic to Benoit so he can talk about uh, construction mechanics. Hi guys, how's it going? Um, so for those of you who haven't seen the January video, I've uh, prepared a small construction demo for you here. Um, so let's say I want to build myself a small outpost here outside the castle. Um, I start by building a, well, placing a couple of uh, phantom blocks, which are not actual blocks, they're just there as markers to uh, tell me where my construction will be once it's, uh, when, once it's started constructing. Um, so there's a variety of blocks I can place there, and I can also correct mistakes if I, I misplaced a block or stuff like that. Um, you can see there, there's a half block, there's a full block, there's arch blocks. There's also a variety of other blocks, but we're not going to use them. Um, for this small outpost. Anyway, I'm getting close to something satisfactory here. So once we have a construction that's decent, um, we start um, designing a mining area, which is going to be used for um, a gathering resources. Um, so here it's shown in yellow and there's a small icon. Uh, we spawn a Bricktron and we click on the icon. That means that the Bricktron can now start um, focusing on mining there. Um, next up, we want to put a couple of stockpiles, which is uh, going to um, transform into crates and eventually into uh, stone blocks, as you will see uh, very soon. 
Anyway, uh, once the mining is started, it gets going uh, automatically. The Bricktrons are handling it uh, by themselves. Uh, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Um, the only thing the player has to uh, uh, decide is uh, how many Bricktrons should be uh, in the mine. And also uh, where to put the stockpiles uh, in correspondence with the mine so as to get an efficient uh, workflow. Um, you can see that the terrain is uh, dynamically deformed here. Um, and also there will be a small uh, uh, staircase uh, um, automatically put there by the Bricktrons uh, just so that everything flows uh, automatically. Um, so I've built a, I've added a Bricktron to uh, start the construction once the stone blocks are ready. Look for it. There it is. So now we have uh, actual uh, bricks to uh, start the building. Um, our constructor Bricktron will now uh, select a phantom block and replace it with an actual block. Um, he can now walk over the actual blocks and uh, start building more blocks and uh, eventually complete his construction. Um, here we chose to have two uh, miners for one builder. That's uh, generally a good ratio for construction in a place like this one. Finally, we have a radial menu for you here, um, which is a tool for quick access um, with uh, different uh, blocks that you can build with. As you can see, it's really super fast. You can just slide your mouse in the general direction you want to pick and uh, get on with your construction. It's uh, usually uh, very good to uh, browse through a number of different constructions and alternate between different tasks uh, as you go. So I'm now going to pass the mic to Francois, who's going to talk to you about uh, units and different uh, combat mechanics. Hey there! So, um, we just moved on the island. I'll show you that uh, we have the castle right there. And uh, this is a little construction we just made. Um, but uh, now uh, we went on the top of the, of the mountain because I need some space to show you the characters. So, uh, the first character I, I will show you is uh, the worker. So this is our basic Brickron, like you saw earlier. He's uh, the one who will be building, mining, cutting down trees, and doing basically all the hard work. Hard work. Uh, he has a hammer, but he could have a pickaxe or an axe, uh, depending on his job. Uh, the next one is the uh, warrior. So uh, this is our little fighter. He's the basic melee unit. He's the one guarding the doors and uh, fighting the, the enemies when they get in, or when you're out and you need to protect your characters. So uh, that's it for the warrior, and this is the archer. So uh, I'll just explain to you how our system works. Uh, it's not a system with classes, it's a system with items and tools. So uh, the archer has a bow and uh, a quiver, but if we give that to the uh, worker, he becomes an archer, basically. And if we give him a sword, he becomes a warrior. So the tools he uses defines, defines his tasks and his abilities. Uh, now our warrior has all his equipment, he has his helmet and his shield, but he could have just a sword or just a, just a shield, but no helmet. Or we could have given him uh, the helmet of the, uh, the archer or any helmet we want. So uh, basically uh, it's for protection. Uh, I will uh, remove them because I'll show you the enemies now. Okay, so uh, this is our basic uh, bad guy. We call him the Corruptron. Um, he is uh, some sort of a more uh, primal and evil version of the Bricktron, and uh, he's the one you'll be fighting uh, throughout the game. So uh, he's uh, living on the islands, and he's attacking you on a regular basis. Um, he's kind of uh, your equivalent in strength too, but uh, you have to be a little clever uh, to uh, avoid him and fight him uh, with your units. Uh, for now he's the first and only uh, complete enemy we have but uh, for the video we made him a big brother right here uh, he's uh, a little stupid and incomplete but uh, we will uh, we will revise him and uh, make him a little better uh, so his design may change a little during the during the the development but for now he's some sort of uh, mini bus and uh, he's uh, much bigger much stronger but uh, much slower so uh, that's it for the enemies uh, so now I'll be showing you some uh, fighting demonstration back to our castle and uh, the little outpost from earlier so uh, now I'll show you uh, the first uh, fighting uh, mechanics so uh, I'll just summon up a warrior and I will ask him to stand his ground so he won't be moving and he'll be attacked directly by the Corruptron. So, um, there it is. 
They're basically exchanging hits, blocking each other's, and eventually killing each other's. So now the corrupt run wins. Uh, that's pretty unlikely, but it will be a nice occasion for me to show you the archer, uh, who's gonna finish the job. So um, there you go. Back. <laughs> So uh, the archer is pretty straightforward, it's a one-shot kill, but uh, basically he misses often when the characters are moving, and uh, eventually the type of uh, bows and arrows you'll be using may uh, differ the, the number of damage he'll, they'll be doing. So uh, almost every time the archer is uh, in good range, he has the opportunity to kill his uh, enemy before he comes to him. But uh, if we make him fight a uh, closer enemy, he's going to be killed very easily. As you can see, he can't really defend against a close enemy, and uh, he can't really shoot at point blank. So uh, that's for the uh, basic enemies. And um, the Corruptron can't enter the castles uh, directly if they have doors. He has to bash them open first. So uh, to show that, to show that, I will put a little character on the top, and you'll see how it works. So there you go. So you see, he's trying to bash the door open. He breaks in, goes all the way up. and strikes the poor character. <laughs> so that's it. This is our first uh, basic mechanics of fighting and uh, that concludes our little demonstration for today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, by the way, we're in the middle of a Kickstarter campaign, so if you want to help or see what it's like, uh, you can just follow the links. And if you have any question, you can go on our website or uh, just email us and we'll be happy to answer. So thank you for watching and uh, bye bye.